Well, hello and welcome to CFB UK, home of the UK's biggest college football fan page for the fans, by the fans. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to be trying my best with the speech. Got a bit of a wisdom tooth problem, but we'll let, we'll soldier on. So yeah, we're back with another episode of Four from Four Thousand. Yes, another one. Uh, and again, if you've not joined us before, well, why is it four thousand? Well, we're about four thousand miles away from the United States, but we're bringing you exclusive interviews with NCAA Division One players stateside, transmitted back here to the UK. Um, so who have we got today? Well, we are extremely fortunate to introduce you to our guest today. Uh, it's a first year at CFB UK. We've actually got a quarterback. Exciting time. So he's the starting quarterback for the Charlotte 49ers, having thrown 28 touchdowns in and just 20, wow, and just 13 interceptions. Fantastic in his young career so far. And he, in 2019, he had a QB rating of 153.6. Fantastic. So we're very privileged. We're just going to admit him now. Please welcome from the Charlotte 49ers, as he's joining right now from Charlotte, it's Chris Reynolds. Hello. How, How you doing? doing? How you doing, man? Good, good, good to be here. We're really good. We're really good. I'm sorry, there's usually three of us, but uh, our friend, he's, he's got bad technology problems and uh, <laughs> the, the IT guy can't get out to, to fix it in time. So you've, you've just got us, myself, Nick, and we've got Lewis. Uh, no problem. Happy, happy to be here, Lewis. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, h- how's it going? Are you, out in, are you out in Charlotte right now? I am right now. Um, I'm in Charlotte right now. We've been having workouts and voluntary workouts here in the mornings. Um, just good to be back with some of the guys again. Cool, man. That's great. That's great. Well, we've got some questions for you. We've got some questions. The fans have got some questions. And we've got a little game to play with you. And then we're going to finish off with some this or that question. So should we just jump straight in? Let's get going. So, so, Lewis, you've got the first question for Chris there. Yeah, so um, we all love a good origin story here at uh, CFB UK. So we want to know what was it like growing up in North Carolina? Um, and how did a young Chris Reynolds you sort of realised he was a talented football player? So I was actually born and raised in New Jersey. And then when I was 11 years old, I moved to North Carolina with my whole family. Um, I started playing quarterback when I was about 11 years old. I used to be a running back. But um, whenever they wanted to throw the ball, they used to do halfback pass, and I would catch the ball and I would throw it. But um, in middle school, I started playing quarterback and went through high school. And um, I wasn't highly recruited. I actually was a walk-on at Charlotte. Okay. Um, then I was thankful enough to earn a scholarship and be the starting quarterback now. But I think around my mid – halfway through high school, I knew I could play at the college level. Cool. cool. So, yeah. So, my, my second question, this is this is one sort of a little bit away from the field. So, you were the high school quarterback, right? So, you, you, were, the, you were the high school quarterback. Um, if any cheesy teenage rom-com movie that we watch over in the UK tell us anything to English people, is that the QB is like the ultimate popular kid in high school. So, <laughs> is that really true or is that just a movie myth? Um, so especially where I'm from and Davie, it's called it's in Davie County, North Carolina. It's very um, small town feel. So it's kind of almost like if you guys ever watch Friday Night Lights, yeah. the show, and yeah. I guess the movie too. It's kind of got that feeling to it, but not to that extent. Like, for example, on Friday nights, the town would clear out and go to our high school games. Um, but when it came to the high school itself, I mean, yeah, there was some some clout, I guess you could say, with being the guy <laughs> in high school. But, um, but I never really thought about it like that or let it get to my head. I just thought about it as a like, great high school re- relationships um, and having a great time and having the community support it. Yeah, so... Um... Just a just a short question here. What was what was the sort of competition like uh, in high school football in North Carolina for you? Um, so we were four A. So in North Carolina it goes one A, two A, three A, or four A, and we were the biggest in the biggest conference. Um, we played some really good teams. Um, Dudley was our main competition my senior high school, and that included Virginia Tech's quarterback Hendon Hooker and um, a bunch of other Division One um, prospects, but. I would say North Carolina is a top 10 state in high school football. You know, you got Texas, Florida, California, Georgia, um, Texas. and But I'd say we have some pretty good competition, especially at the 4A level. 
Yeah, we've, we've, we've spoken to a guy, we've spoken to a player, uh, safety from Duke who's went is from Florida, and we've spoken to um, a guy, a, a cornerback from Penn State, who's from Trenton, New Jersey, and he, he said very much different, like nobody, nobody came to watch his high school games in Trenton, he said, um, in terms of scouts and stuff, but in Florida, it's, it's insanely competitive, such high level, with so many players getting into into huge colleges and then in, in, into the NFL. But um, but we're going to touch on that a little bit later. Now, the, this this question for you, nobody, as, as much as the little research I did, nobody has criticised your quality on the football field and what you're able to produce as a quarterback from high school to college level. But one thing that some scouts and analysts um, did pick up on was, even though you're taller than both of us, is your height. In school, at high school level, so given the success of players like Russell Wilson and Callum Murray in recent years, do you think really how much do you think height really matters for a quarterback? It's definitely changing. You know, I would say ten years ago, I think that um, the way people ran their offensive systems that they required more height with the pro style dropback style. But now we're getting into this new era of play where it's a much more spread read option. Um, for example, you got guys like Kyler Murray out there now doing things that people have never seen before. You're able to control the offense more and spread the ball out. And unlike the pro style days where you had to be under center, drop back, stay within the pocket the whole time and go through progressions, now you have different ways to read offenses and read, I mean, read defenses. So I think the more we're growing in football, I think the less we need to focus on the height. Um, especially, obviously, I'm going to be a little biased, it's a little smaller. But um, I've never really had an issue with that because how am I supposed to have an issue with that if I've dealt with it my whole life? So I don't know any different. You know what I mean? So I play the same way my whole life. So I don't know any different. I don't know what it's like to play from six foot five. All I know is how to play from my height and see through certain ways of playing football. Words yeah. you so far, definitely. Um, yeah, go on, Lewis. Yeah, so um, we're talking your senior year in our high school uh, recruitment time. Um, did any of your teammates get recruited? And so what was the whole process like? Did, you know, scouts come to watch you play, you know, meetings with schools, et cetera? Did, what, what was that whole sort of process like yeah. for you? So how it would work was, I mean, there was obviously certain recruiting periods and there would be dead periods within college scouts. But during the live periods, they would come to my school and they would call me out of class. And I'd go to the coach's office and I would talk to these scouts and recruiters during the school day. And they asked me how I'm doing. They invite me to camp, et cetera. None of them were actually offering me, but they talked to me because of, but my height kind of held them back from offering me. But then I go to camps, blah, blah, blah. But they, some will come to games. Um, for example, like if they had a game on a Saturday and they were in town, they would go to our game on a Friday night and then go back to their team hotel and then go to their game. So that's how it usually would work. Cool. And did any, and did any of your uh, teammates get recruited from your high school team? So my, um, my, line, my linebacker went to um, Davidson. I had a running back who went to Army. I had a receiver who had an offer from Army, but he didn't want to go. I had a left tackle who had an offer from ECU. And there's a bunch of more guys now that are younger that, like, for example, the quarterback there now, he's going to Liberty. Mm. Um, And a running back has the offers from Wake Forest. Nice. Yeah, Wake Forest. We watch, obviously, watch QB1. Wake Forest seems to be quite one that links with the Carolina guy. Seem to like the idea of going to wait for us. That's cool. That's cool. So Charlotte gave you the chance to play D1, D1 football. But was this, why was this the right move for you? And, and what specifically about their program? Of course, they came and you, was, you were a walk-on and got on the team. But why, why, what was about their program? Was it that you thought, yeah, I can commit myself for four years to this team? So when you get onto that campus, you would think it's the most beautiful campus you've ever seen. I've been to so many college campuses and something about Charlotte, it just was beautiful. The coaching staff was great. And, and um, I don't know, I lived an hour from my hometown and I felt like it was the perfect fit. You know, it's a perfect area for me to grow up after football, um, raise a family possibly. And it just had that home feel to it. You know, you just, sometimes you just go places and you just hit you. It's like, this is it. That was kind of that feeling I had. Nice. No, that sort of home away from home feeling. Yeah. Mm, that's nice man I like that I like that so Saturday September 1st you took your first snap um, as a freshman starter uh, against Fordham and um, describe your sort of emotions on that day and, and sort of what did it feel like to get the first uh, win under your belt so that day there was probably about 
three lightning delays, I think, before the game started. <laughs> so young freshman, I'm thinking I'm like 19 years old. And I'm just looking, I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. And um, but he's getting pushed back through rain delays. And you finally get out there and it feels like everybody's left. And it's kind of like a practice almost because like half the, not even half the stadium's filled. But um, it was a feeling I think I won't forget, you know, just getting out there and stepping out and playing football again and for the first time since high school. And um, and actually in the fourth quarter, half the lights went out because of some electrical problems. But it's definitely it was a unique day and it's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Yeah, I was going to say, you won't forget that one in a, in a rush, will you? <laughs> yeah. Not at all, not at all. But, but of course, from there, you know, you had a fantastic run of games, um, being the freshman starter straight in. Um, but as you mentioned, obviously facing some adversity when it comes to recruitment, um, you have to, you were dealt another, obviously, another not great hand when, when you had the ankle injury. Um, and obviously losing the starting job, albeit temporarily. But again, we talked about the emotions going through you after that first win against Fordham. Um, being a D1 starting college quarterback to the moment obviously you suffered that ankle injury how how did it drive you to to get back on the field and take your job back yeah um when you when I'm sitting in a training room locked up pretty much trying to deal with rehab and you know and you see everybody else practicing and being together and trying to figure out a way to go to a bowl game it just pushes you more to want to get back out there when you're separated from the whole system and how you operate together to go after one goal and um it tends to eat it at you a little bit. So I think I just took that with had a lot of pride in finishing up my rehab a little bit early and getting back out there and um, just performing as best I possibly can to do what I love again. Well, that you did. That you did. Um, and then we'll move on to the next bit where obviously Lewis has got the next question, but it's set up perfectly by you getting back uh, on the field as the starting quarterback again and uh, getting involved in a very, a very big game against a very big team, Lewis. Yeah, so you came up against sort of potential number one uh, overall pick in 2021, uh, Trevor Lawrence, last season. And um, So what was it like and what did you take away from that game um, and sort of being on the sidelines there watching him? Yeah, um, that was probably my, that was my first game and being in that big of a stage, I would say, because um, I didn't get to play against Tennessee the year before that. And I think what I've... My first getting out there, I was like, oh, my God, like, this is crazy. This is awesome. Like, this is going to be a super cool experience. Then it went like that. <laughs> it went that fast. And um, after the game, I was like, what could I have done different to kind of slow the bleeding down a little bit? So I think for future reference, like, for example, we go to Tennessee, I got to realize, like, I need to take a deep breath, like, and relax and, like, treat this like another game instead of thinking about all the hype that goes along with it. Um, if that's just – taking a second longer before clapping my hands for a play or um, just realizing like this is a football game and they put their pants on just like I put my pants on and just play in the sport that we love. For sure. Definitely. Well, this interview, this interview is all about you and we've got all, all questions are for you apart from this one, but um, watching up close, does, does he look like the real deal? The first overall draft pick? Oh, he's, he's, got freakish talent you know what i mean he's so naturally gifted um my kicker right now played with him in high school so i did so we know a lot about him but um yeah he's definitely freaking inch. he's definitely gonna be in top three if not number one pick you know he's got talent that has never been seen before maybe go to lewis's jags on there with the cap on there <laughs> um cool so last question on the first section so you're heading into your red shirt junior season um so what are your goals both personally this year and then also as a team for, for 2020? Yeah, um, obviously the main goal is to stay healthy, right? As a quarterback, like you can't do anything unless you're healthy. But the next goal is to really, I want my completion percentage to be over 64%. I want to be throwing the ball a lot more. I want to be throwing for probably over 3,000 or more and rushing for about 750. So it's just personal goals with myself. But the main goal, the main task is to win a conference championship. That's the main focus. You know, that that's going to come first. And I think everybody's locked and loaded on that and ready to take this program to another level. Sure. Well, I uh, know you mean, you miss, obviously missed the intro because we did the intro before we let you in. But our intro was about, you know, 28 touchdowns and just 13 interceptions so far in your first two seasons. And last year, 
2019, you can't really do much better than a QB rating of 153.6. That's outstanding. So uh, you've got high, high targets for yourself, but 100% we think you can achieve them, given your stats so far. Um, so moving to the second section, it's called the mailbag. We've got some questions. We've got eight questions from fans. Um, so we're going to dive into them. So question one is from Archie Davies, and he asks, what is the hardest thing about playing quarterback? Hmm. I think it's the preparation. You know, you really have once you get once you get to it though, once you hit that mark of of preparation, I think you're gonna be good to go. But when you when you become most successful as a quarterback, it's over fifty percent mental. It doesn't like physical will only get you so far. Um, so I pride myself in staying in the film room and learning as much as I could. I'm gonna try to be that guy that's the first one in the building and the last one out. And you also have to show leadership within your teammates. Like you have to be the guy that people look to during tough times and bad times. And sometimes it's hard for quarterbacks to get to that point and to get that respect and to learn that how that preparation gets to them where they are. I think that's the hardest thing to get to. But once you get there, it'll take you longer ways. Cool. So, um, so the next one we've got is from um, Chris Jones. And he wants to know who is or has been the toughest player you've played against so far in your career? Hmm. I mean, I think Isaiah Simmons was oh, wow. a freak from Clemson. Um, just doing a like a pitch option off him. I feel like I was thrown around an alien. <laughs> that guy was a special player and was all over the place. One time you look up, he's in free safety. One time he's my outside linebacker. So he's somebody that's extremely versatile. He's going to do great things in the league. Yeah, he's a great player. He, he's the guy, as a Giants fan, he's the guy that I wanted badly on the team. He went tackle, of course, that's the position to address, but Simmons, I, I, I just loved watching him last season more than any other defensive player, more than Chase Young. I loved watching Simmons. Such a, just a, what do you call it, a Swiss yeah. Army knife, really was. In yeah, no doubt. So David Bullen has a question for you, Chris, and he says, quite clinical, but we're going to ask it because he asked it. What's your best, what was your best play and what was your worst play from last season and what did they both teach you? So we'll start with the worst. I think that my worst play came, I think it has to be FAU. It was right before the half and I think we had the opportunity to get into field goal preparation or field goal area. And um, I think we're at our 50-yard line, and we try to get to a ball to the outside guy on, like, an out route. And I forced the ball on the up, up in the air, and it kind of killed our momentum going into half because we were going to get the ball back. So sometimes I wish I could go back. But actually, I learned from a lot from it because I would play against Marshall, and I had the same situation before. I made sure I threw the ball away on the first try. Second try, I came up and threw a 30-yard pass to Buddy Vic, and it put some field preparation. So that was a learning moment for me. But my best play, it has to be the last play, North Texas. Um, we were fighting tooth and nail the whole game, and then – they were up like two scores in the fourth quarter. Then we scored again, and then we got the ball back. And with 30 seconds left, I threw a 40 yard or 50 yard pass off balance at my buddy, and he caught it. He ended up basically winning us the game. Wow, awesome! There you go. That's, that's a bit of both ends of that for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so this is from uh, Lee Wick. You know, what is your favorite route to uh, throw to? Um, if you could pinpoint one thing, what is the what is the main thing you need to win on this season? It has to be. It probably is going to be any type of like, route. It's just something I like having the line use and be able to put the ball where I want to. It's very sometimes hard to do that in the field by throwing the ball on the edges. And um, something I think I need to work on my turnover, turnover mark because sometimes I find myself making some stupid decisions sometimes, but I also learn from it. So I think that's here you're going to see less interceptions and protecting the football more. Wow, I've just I'm just listening in there. You, the, you, I think it's my uh, setup here. All of a sudden, you went really slow, and then it just sped up really quickly. Uh, if it, I think that's just me setting up. So, but my bad. You know, we are, we are going from Charlotte to Northern England live, so <laughs> you can have a few technical difficulties here and there. I'm cool. Yeah, no um, so uh, Jay Rattus, Rat Jay Watterson, sorry, Jay. Uh, it said, how much does the noise on third down really affect you? I don't even think about it. I don't even hear it, honestly. When I'm on the field, I don't even hear crowd noise because I'm just so dialed in, focused on what the task is at hand and what I'm looking at on the field. But, yeah, I really, it doesn't even go through my head what's going on around me other than with the people on the field. 
Wow. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a cool answer. So yeah, so you really get, you really get locked in because uh, we've had other answers of people locked in, but they, when we've asked the question about the idea of potentially being no crowds at the games, if that happened, like there is in English, uh, English soccer right now, um, what would that make a difference? Um, and we've heard a lot of people go, yeah, the crowd like really make like, not you know, obviously fans are always important, but like it really, really gees you up. But I guess for some people, you really just keep that mental focus. Yeah. In. I mean, when I, obviously when I'm on the sideline, I'm not in the field. It's when I really like hear the fans and appreciate them because I mean, when you run out of the tunnel and you see all the fans jumping and screaming, it gets you fired up, gets you excited. But once I'm on the field and I'm really focused on what I'm looking at, it's like they're not even there. Yeah, sure, I I get that. I get that for sure. Um, we'll get um, So yeah, the next one is from Paul Kane, and this is a bit of a would you rather. And um, so he wants to know: Would you rather have the prestige of going a top three pick in the draft, or would you rather? Go later on uh, in the rounds of the draft, but go to a Super Bowl winning uh, team, but possibly not get as much game time. I want to win a Super Bowl. I think that's the ultimate goal. Is to say you want a Super Bowl, that's the ultimate of the ultimate accomplishments. You know what I mean? You can't really beat that. So I'll take the Super Bowl any day. Cool. For sure. Well, we've got a question that's a little bit similar to that later at the very end. So we'll see if you stick to your answer by then. Uh, so. <laughs> Um, Michael Houghton asks, and I can pretty much already guess it, considering what you've already said, but he says, what is the best stadium you've played in? Best game that I've played in? From an individual standpoint or from a team standpoint? Oh, sorry, the best stadium that you've played in? Stadium. Clemson. Yeah, not, not even close. Tennessee might be a different story, though. We'll see, but as of now, Clemson. Is that your biggest game this season, Tennessee? Like Tennessee and Duke. So Duke? I got Duke this year. Nice. Watch out for safety, Marquise Waters, because uh, we interviewed him and he's he wants a few interceptions. Right. Yeah, but you're not going to give him one, so that's, that's cool. Sorry, Marquise. Um, <laughs> last question from Lewis. Yeah, so this is just from Joe Frederick. Um, and he says, the CUSA is, uh, you know, an exciting conference, but it seems like it doesn't get much respect from the BCS. Um, so if and when do you think this will change? Um. Here soon. I, we have some really tough teams in there. I mean, with uh, Marshall, um, Louisiana Tech, um, FAU, FIU, even now with Butch Davis. Um, teams are really starting to grow. And we they play some good teams, but they've won some big games. The FIU beat Miami. Um, F North Texas beat Arkansas. And um, some teams are playing some big teams close. So I think that um, our teams are growing here in Conference USA. And I think a little bit more, much longer we'll get earn some more respect. Definitely, definitely. Cool, that's the two longest sections done, so thanks very much, Chris. So now we've got part three, and it's a little game we like to play here um, at CFB UK, and it's called Guess the Brit. So we have an iPad, and we have 10 pictures, and you've just got to try and tell us who is it in the picture. Okay. Sound good? Okay. So the first one is, they're all people who've kind of been in America or known in America at least a little bit. So we're starting with soccer. Don't know what your soccer knowledge is like, but who is this famous English soccer, former soccer player? David Beckham. Boom. Easy. Straight in. Straight in. One out of one. All right. Who is this extremely important lady in England? Um, um, is that Queen Elizabeth? Two for two. But even the name. Even the name. I know. We were given the point for Queen of England, but... Elizabeth's always preferable. Okay, music time. Who is this uh, multi-million selling singer? Ed Sheeran. Stuff, easy stuff. All right, so that's three for three. Uh, oh, we, we, the, the most we've had so far is nine, but we have to say that it was two players from Florida State together. So, okay. you know, that, I mean, still we still counted it. Um, movie time. Female actress will give you the point if you can tell us what the actress is called or even just what her character in this is called. Oh, that's the girl from Harry Potter. I've never really watched the Harry Potter as well, but I don't really know her name. That's cool. Her name's Emma Watson, and the uh, character is called Hermione Granger. Okay. So, 
moving on. Uh, talent show time. The big bad boss of America's Got Talent. Do you know who this dude is? Oh, it's Simon. We'll give him. Well, yeah, Simon Cowell. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah, well, yeah. You got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, actor, male actor. Sorry if that's female actor, male actor. Um, actor time. Uh, been in quite a few films. Do you know who this guy is? Ah, uh, I don't. I have no idea. Um, I don't know him from too many. I know him from the the U.S. Office, from The Office, and I know him from Thor. But I don't know what other American films in. It's Idris. Yeah, Mar I remember him from Thor. I think yeah, I can see Thor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dude that dropped uh, on the gate. He sees yep. that dude. Yeah, it's Idris Idris Elba. Yeah. All right. Uh, famous chef time. The guy who swears a lot. Oh gosh! Oh man! Oh, I forgot his name. I don't know his name, but I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, we we did this with we did this with Jaya Brown from Penn State. Uh, Gordon. Gordon, yeah. And if I give you Gordon, can you get his surname? Gordon Ramsay. There you go. I'll give him that. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Right. We're going on now. But last three. This one. Um, is a very very important thing. It's not a person, but it's probably the most important drink in England, in Britain. What is this? Coffee. Mm, no. It's a hot drink that we drink, but people drink either this or coffee. But Tea. it's a very yeah. What? Tea. Tea. Yeah. There you go. In English tea. Uh, we tend to drink about five, six cups a day. Really? Mm. It's not I drink a lot of coffee. I mean, yeah, it, it's, 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 only got, it's only got a little bit of caffeine in it, but yeah. Um, okay, food time. The possibly the most important meal. Tend to have it on a Friday. Takeaways are always good and cheap. Um, you know what this is? Is that fish and chips? Yeah, it is. Oh. That's exactly Bastard. what it is. A nice bit of fish and chips. You haven't, you haven't got any clue what type of fish is it in fish and chips in England, do you? Is it cod? Cod, cod is like the, the, the cod is like the more expect, like if you want to spend another pound, like one pound, <laughs> you need cod. But we have, I don't know if you've it, a haddock. Do you have haddock in America? Ah, uh, it sounds familiar. I'm not, not sure though. Big fish. Are you a fisherman guy? I fish every now and then, but it's mostly just like bass fishing. Yeah. yeah, our fishing's not really the same. We get like trout and stuff. Not, quite. not really so much. All right, last one. Um, probably in recent years, the biggest, most famous uh, English player to play uh, in the NFL and to play in uh, college football. Do you know who this guy is? I do not know who that is. I'll give you a hint. He played for the Dolphins. He won the Super Bowl as the starting running back with the Eagles like two years ago. Is uh, that JJ? That sure is JJ. There we go. So right, one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Yeah, ten. Oh, fine. I'll take that. I'll That's take up that. there. That is up there. That is joint highest as a solo that we've had. And this is like the seventh interview we've done, so that's that's good. We can get this graphic made up with like your name and the Charlotte logo, like above Duke and Penn State and stuff like that. <laughs> Love it. Well, Chris, we're coming down to the last section. It's called this or that. We're going to give you two choices, and you just tell us this or that. Um, okay. So, Lewis, you'll start. Go for it. So, would you rather win the national championship with Charlotte or be a first round NFL draft pick? National Championship with Charlotte. Why? I just think, you know, I've put so much time into this place and, you know, they were the only ones to give me an opportunity. And we're still kind of like a startup program. We've only been here for about six years. But um, this is definitely something that would, obviously, would boost up Charlotte itself. So I think I'd take that with all the memories I've had with all of my teammates. All right. All right. All right. This is like growing up, would you rather be a Heisman winner? Or in the NFL Hall of Fame? 
NFL Hall of Fame, I think. Why is that? I don't know. Just because I feel like, ooh, I think that if I'm an NFL Hall of Famer, I think that means I've had more success playing football, like the longest. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. You know, I figure I've seen Heisman's like win it and then not do much in the NFL. But if I become an NFL Hall of Famer, that means I've had a successful NFL career, more than successful. So I think that's why I would pick that. That's logic for you right there, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So for this next one, we sort of we know you'd be happy to get drafted by any team, but if you had the preference, would you? rather join a team that's just won the Super Bowl or a team that's just started a rebuild? Just started a rebuild. Because I think that would mean they would need a change and somebody to lead them to the next level. I think that if somebody won the Super Bowl, I think that would mean they have sustained success and it'd be great to be a part of that. Don't get me wrong. I would be any part, part of an NFL team. But yeah. knowing that they've already had their solidification over there in the offensive room and the quarterback room, I think it'd be special to be part of rebuilding something. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's been the most popular answer. Um, okay, uh, cold weather state or hot weather state kind of guy? I think I'd have to go hot weather guy. I don't know. I just like being warm and being in warm weather than being in the cold all the time. I lived in Jersey and I've lived in Carolina and I've been around more southern states. I think I'd be warmer weather for sure. Well, I've really wanted to know. I've seen that fan going round. Is it really quite warm where you are? Because it is not warm here. <laughs> it is probably mid eighties. Mid eighties. Do you know what? It is. Uh, it is ten. It is ten p.m. at night here, but the temperature right now is about sixty-four, maybe. Wow. So yeah, even even at its warmest today, I don't think it reached seventy, and that's actually a warm day. We're actually got yeah, some yeah, it's not been cold today. <laughs> yeah, we've actually we've actually got an eighty plus day coming on Wednesday though, so happy days. That's the, probably the warmest it's been this year. So very nice. Um, go on, Lewis. Yeah, so I think I already know the uh, the answer to this one. But are you a locker room leader or are you a guy that quietly goes about your business? Um, you know. I used to be a guy who used to just quietly go about my business and just try to lead by example because I feel like I was a young guy and shouldn't like should let the older seniors use your voice more. But now it's getting to the point where I got to use my voice more. So I think lately, the past six months, I've definitely been using my voice more and been the guy that people listen to. So I think that's where I am now. Cool. cool. Well, Chris, this is the last question. So uh, but thank you very much for coming and joining us. So it's a, it's a hypothetical question, but let's roll with it. You're on an NFL team, okay? You're on an NFL team. And Roger Goodell, he calls your team and says, uh, all right, guys, um, we want to choose your team to play your home fixture, one of your home fixtures um, over in London as part of the NFL London Games. Come and play in front of the UK fans. Spend the week uh, in London. Uh, for 90,000 fans, including Lewis and I. Um, <laughs> would you want them to say yes or would you want them to say no? To go out there? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I'd do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that is the wrong answer. <laughs> I've got to admit, to set up. We're waiting for the first person to go, no, I don't want to go to London. And I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> but oh, we absolutely. pretty much would like you to come out and play um, in front of us. 100%. In the UK. We have a huge fan base for the NFL and a really growing fan base for college football. This group's only been going for a few months, but we've got a thousand fans in it already and it is uh, it's growing and growing. So, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate oh, it. Guys. Thank yeah. you, guys. We had fun. I appreciate you. It's going to go up in the next couple of weeks on our page. Um, we're going to drop your Instagram handle as well. Hopefully some UK followers will keep track of your career. And uh, we're going to have to try and find ourselves. In, in the UK, we're pretty, we're pretty lucky. We get access to quite a lot of NFL gear. But there is not a single store online or in, in, uh, in shops that sell college gear. So we're going to have to try and uh, find our way to to get some Charlotte gear, aren't we, from, from over in the States and, and rep you this season. So, Chris, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. You take care. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great, great season. Thanks very much, Thank Chris. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.